started recording. Yes, it yes. Works. All right. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, webinar by the Public Policy Hub at the School of Global Affairs and Public Policy, uh, AUC. Our webinar today is uh, titled Human Capital Management in Startups in uh, Egypt. And uh, we're starting now 11 a.m. and continuing until around uh, 2 p.m. We promise you a lively, entertaining, and uh, interactive uh, webinar. We have uh, two teams of researchers. We have uh, four reputable uh, discussants uh, that you will enjoy hearing their comments on the research presented. I'm uh, Leila al a professor of public administration at AUC and a director for the uh, Public Policy Hub uh, project. And uh, you have on the screen here the title of uh, our uh, project, the Public Policy Hub, and the slogan that we go by, where rigor meets creativity. We're very proud to all the time brag about the Public Policy Hub and uh, what we do at the hub and for those participants who have not yet heard of the hub activities i'd like just to give a brief introduction first about uh, what it's all about what is the public policy hub all about it's a project that started in october 2017 uh, within the school of uh, gap auc and uh, we uh, aim at developing the policy analysis uh, skills of young egyptian scholars who uh, join our activities for the purpose of uh, providing evidence-based policy research and effectively communicating the findings of that research to different stakeholders, whether government, policy makers, members of parliament, academics, <clears throat> and any other group who's interested in our research. We claim that we're doing what we're doing in a unique manner, not only that we all the time focus on producing evidence-based research, uh, the uh, alternative uh, policies that we come up with and the recommendations in that policy research all the time need to, to be based on uh, evidence. We uh, rely on the creativity of the young scholars who join our programs to come up with creative solutions for the policies uh, and policy issues that we deal with. And young people are always uh, coming up with very creative and innovative solutions to any problems that they encounter. So it's not business as usual. We are demand-based and uh, we take this very seriously. So it's not us who come up with the policy issues that we decide to work on and uh, investigate, but we approach different government organizations and ask them to give us a list of the policy issues that they are dealing with and that they would like to have the policy uh, uh, hubs, uh, young researchers help them in doing research about. So it's always the government uh, organizations that are considered the starting point for our activities. They are the ones that suggest the policy issues that we're going to work on. Why are we doing that? This is contrary to what academics usually do. Academics usually have the uh, discretion and freedom to pick any research issue, work on it and uh, research it and publish papers about it. But then very few people end up reading what we write up in academia. And uh, I'm saying this uh, candidly and bluntly, but through the hub, because we are responding to real policies and real needs that are encountered in government, there is a higher probability that the policymakers would be interested in reading what we come up with. And uh, what else we're doing that is unique, right? And this is a bragging uh, section of the webinar. We uh, not only publish policy research, but uh, the 20, 30 pages that uh, are usually the uh, length of a regular policy research paper, but we ask our uh, young scholars and researchers also to come up with a policy brief that summarizes what's in that policy uh, research paper so that if the policymaker doesn't have time to read through the uh, lengthy paper uh, explaining the research and providing all the evidence and the data, 
he or she can read the policy brief that's uh, summarized uh, four pages maximum with uh, graphics and charts and uh, attractive uh, colors and formatting. And we don't stop at that. If there's no time to go through the brief, we know how busy policymakers are. We also provide them with the advocacy tool for the main findings of the research in the form of a short two or three minute video in colloquial Arabic and simplified language, no complicated jargon whatsoever, so that the main message gets across. We've been doing that for uh, now uh, since 2017, nearly five uh, years. And uh, we've had a very positive response from government and from policymakers, and they're reaching out to us to uh, uh, work with them and uh, deal with the policy issues that they are encountering. And uh, we find evidence for uh, this interest by government in what we're doing by uh, following the news and recognizing that the policy issues we have worked with are identical more or less to the policy issues that are discussed by top level officials in government. So uh, here we're listing the uh, main objectives our, of our program, the production of the top quality evidence the uh, nurturing environment uh, for the young researchers where they are uh, given all the needed resources, uh, the uh, trained young Egyptian policy analysts and advocates that can uh, contribute to uh, better and more evidence-based policy in general in Egypt uh, and support the decision-making in government. We make sure we link the young researchers to international think tanks, to uh, uh, local also research centers and, uh, and uh, think tanks. We uh, use different ways to disseminate and uh, distribute our uh, policy research. And we provide them with a free space to deliberate and do their research, no interference whatsoever, whether by the government or by the donor agency. It's up to the young researchers working with their mentor to figure out what are the potential solutions for their uh, policy issues. So how exactly do we do that? We provide training to the uh, participants who uh, elect to join our course. And uh, we uh, recruit carefully who's going to be a good potential uh, young researcher, whether from within the pool of graduate students at the school or in other schools at AUC and sometimes from outside AUC, we get master's degree uh, holders who are interested in joining our uh, activities. They get intensive training over a week long period on public policy analysis, public policy making and uh, effective communication and advocacy. Uh, they are assigned a mentor, a faculty mentor, uh, to uh, supervise and oversee their work and help them have access to people in government to uh, interview and collect information from. Once they're done with their research, we uh, put it in uh, the uh, format that uh, we have here in terms of the template for the uh, policy research paper, the brief, and we hire professional companies to help with the development of the uh, advocacy tools and the videos. They disseminate their findings in public conferences and seminars. And the winning groups uh, before COVID, we used to uh, uh, take them on study tours <laughs> to the US, to Washington and New York, visit uh, think tanks and get to uh, learn more about the uh, different uh, policy environment in uh, another uh, country in the US and figure out the challenges and opportunities over there. On the screen is a list of the uh, different uh, topics that examples of the different topics that we've worked with. We are not going to go through the list, but it's a very diverse list uh, suggested by different government organizations and ministries. All the research is available on the Public Policy Hub website, on its Facebook page, the videos are on the YouTube channel and on the AUC uh, knowledge fountain. 
and we're going to pro provide uh, the links uh, to these uh, topics that we've worked with. We've done, for example, research about moving government employees to the administrative new capital, the challenges of achieving that based on the request from the Central Agency for Organization and Administration. We've talked about uh, stunting anemia, children with disabilities, and uh, as suggested by the Ministry of Social Solidarity and National Council for Childhood and uh, Motherhood about fighting corruption in local administration, Ministry of Local uh, Administration. Uh, we've talked about ecotourism, we've talked about uh, vulnerable older people without care, and just yesterday on the news they were discussing a new law to uh, help uh, take better care of older people in uh, Egypt. We, we've talked about making small families a social notion and uh, many other issues. Three conferences have been organized so far to disseminate our research, and the fourth one is scheduled at the beginning of 2021. The uh, study tours, we've uh, taken the winning uh, groups too in the US, where it's not been, it's not been an easy or in just enjoyable time that they spend over there, but it's uh, we organize a very busy schedule, taking them around to uh, different uh, things, Brookings, Pew, Gallup, uh, to UN organizations in uh, New York, UNDP, UNDESA, UNICEF, to govern, to academic, uh, to academic. <laughs> Uh, also universities. I don't know why we're focusing just on the pictures now. And uh, additionally, on uh, uh, local visits to uh, centers here in Egypt, the polling center, Basira, of course, and Dr. Megad Osman to advance NGO for autism, to get them more aware of the issues and uh, policy problems, whether in Egypt or uh, outside Egypt. We also, as a public policy hub, besides this regular uh, format for our work, occasionally organize uh, seminars to disseminate again the research findings we come up with, like the seminar we're doing today. Earlier, we've had seminars about child marriage, about uh, a fair chance for all children in uh, Egypt. And the videos we developed uh, we are also sharing them intensively through social media to summarize the findings of the research. These are examples of the different government ministries and organizations we've dealt with. This is a summary of the policy hub in numbers. So more than tw 12 different uh, government ministries and organizations we've partnered with. Uh, 30 plus policy papers, more than 200 researchers, a number of three conferences and uh, 30 plus videos as well, uh, summarizing the research uh, findings. Now, uh, today uh, we are uh, presenting the work that uh, resulted from a partnership with Oxfam Youth Participation and Employment uh, Project. And over the past couple of years, we started this partnership in 2019. We helped to build capacities of youth employment stakeholders on policy analysis, on writing policy briefs, organizing two training workshops. And we developed uh, two policy papers, one on startups and human capital management in Egypt in, in search of decent uh, jobs. And once we were struck with COVID, we did uh, another uh, paper about the impact of COVID on the startups and human capital management uh, in Egypt. Both papers will be presented today by the uh, different researchers. And a promotional video for the policy papers was also produced. So if the participants, again, do not uh, find enough time to read through the policy papers or the briefs, they can watch the video. And if it's in, uh, interesting to them, they can go back and check the details in the brief and in the data. So I'll give the floor to Dr. Shahjahan Boyan. I know I took maybe more time than necessary, but once I start talking about the public policy hub, I tend to overdo it. Dr. Shahjahan Boyan is an associate professor of public administration and the associate dean 
for undergraduate studies for administration and outreach at the School of Global Affairs and Public Policy and a partner in crime with the Public Policy Hub as a co-PI. So the floor is yours, Dr. Shahjai. You're muted. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Laila, for your uh, generous um, introduction, as well as to introduce the Public Policy Hub. As Dr. Laila has mentioned, we have four distinguished discussions uh, today. I'm introducing uh, Dr. Amal Moafi, uh, is an Egyptian international development professional with more than 20 years of leadership, management, and advisory roles, delivering high impact results to empower young men and women through innovative and evidence based interventions in the areas of education, employment, entrepreneurship, and engagement. This includes a solid track record of high level economic and social policy advocacy, resource mobilization, partnership building, and program project management in the areas of gender equality and social inclusion across Africa and the Middle East. She has a diverse work background in the United Nations, particularly with the ILO, development partners with the USAID, the government of Egypt and private sector, PNG, as well as uh, with the uh, American University in Cairo, all give her a competitive niche in being able to act as an aggregator and integrator of various perspectives in the development discourse. Um, Dr. Moff is currently the chief of party for the USAID scholars activity implemented by the American University in Cairo. Thank you, Amal, for joining us today. Dr. Uh, Ashraf Shita is the chief executive officer and founder of AS for consultants and training. He is also uh, working as an adjunct student professor for entrepreneurship, management, and innovation at the American University in Cairo. He is the winner of the Teaching Excellency Award for the academic year 2015 and 16. Also, Certificate of Excellence in Performance from the AUC Executive Education for the years 2014, 15, 16, and 17. He is the winner of the Silver Award, Stellar Teaching Activities Recognition Start for the academic year 2019. He is the winner of the European Foundation for Management Development Award, EFMD 2019, for teaching cases in the field of family business. He developed and delivered new courses for the first time in Egypt, including family business, innovation and technology, corporate entrepreneurship and development in entrepreneurial mindset. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sheta, for joining us uh, today as well. Uh, our uh, next discussion uh, is uh, Marwa Abdel Tawab. She has more than 20 years of working experience in the field of development and supporting MSM SMS ecosystem. Working in MS Media, SFD, since 1999 in different departments and recently in the policies unit, has been working in policies, strategies, project related MSMEs, development and enabling environment in collaboration with national and international stakeholders. Thank you, Mara, for joining us uh, today as well. Our fourth uh, discussion is Heba Ayad. Uh, uh, Ms. Ayad is an HR professional specialized in HR consulting for startups and SMEs. She founded Talent 360 in 2018, aiming at being HR success partner, targeting the niche of uh, young entrepreneurs for developing their business studies and HR management methods. Since the beginning of 2018, Talent 360 has served more than 80 plus companies and is currently par partnering with GIZ Egypt in several projects empowering startups and SMEs. Ms. Ayad also mentors a number of startups in the early stage through well-known incubators like Flat Six Labs, Nile Planners, and FAPS Business Incubator. Ayat holds a dual master's degree in development from Cairo University and business administration from Eklax Business School. Thank you, Heba, for joining us as well. 
So these are the four discussions. Uh, and back to you, Dr. Laila. Thank you, Dr. Shahjahan. And I'd like to second definitely the uh, uh, welcome by the Public Policy Hub to the four uh, discussants who are taking time from their busy schedules to join us uh, today. Uh, we'll uh, move right away to the presentation of the uh, first uh, policy research uh, paper on startups and human capital management in Egypt in search of decent uh, jobs. The main uh, purpose of the research was to figure out to what extent the ecosystem for startups here in Egypt is uh, helping with the creation of decent jobs and what were the different challenges that were encountered by the startups in uh, managing their human resources uh, in Egypt. And uh, we have a great team of researchers who worked on the topic and uh, I'll get them to introduce themselves once they start presenting their work. We have uh, Fairouz El Dabber, we have Meriham Abdelmalik and we have Ibrahim uh, Hassan. They are uh, associated with the Public Policy Hub work Ibrahim is a graduate of the MPA uh, program. Mary Ham uh, worked with the Public Policy Hub she, together with uh, Fairouz. And Fairouz also is a graduate of the Faculty of Economics and Political Science where I worked earlier. So we're connected with the group of researchers in many different uh, ways. And I'll give them the floor to present their uh, policy research uh, paper uh, right away. So I'll stop sharing and uh, they can share from now. Right, Fairuz. Yes, ready. Thank you, Dr. Laila. Thank you, Dr. Jaja. Um, so first to introduce myself, my name is Fairuz. Uh, like Dr. Laila said, um, I'm a graduate of Faculty of Economics and Political Science, um, and I have a master's degree in uh, political sociology from uh, Paris 1, Pantheon Sorbonne in Paris. Um, I work as a monitoring and evaluation uh, officer in Catholic Relief Services. Um, Fairuz, your camera is off. I um, you're aware. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. Okay. I'll give the floor to Mariam. Right. And you can start sharing your uh, presentation. Or Ibrahim to introduce themselves. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, hello, I'm Mariham Abdul Malik. Um, as Dr. Laila said, I've worked with the Public Policy Hub on many occasions, and I've been lucky to participate and learn a lot um, uh, from my work with them. Um, I graduated from um, Durham University in the UK with a Master's of Science in Sustainability, Culture and Development. It's an anthropology program. And um, if, any if anything, um, I, I learned in um, the master's program is the importance of uh, closing the gap between um, the academic world and the uh, work on ground. And I, this was fulfilled through my work with the Policy Hub. Um, as you get to actually apply uh, the research tools and the academic tools you learn on ground and move um, and actually transfer like the vision and the opportunities and the opinions of people on ground to actually be implemented in research paper and um, develop policy recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Marihan. Ibrahim? Mm -hmm. Hi, Dr. Layla. Hi, Dr. Shahjahan. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Ibrahim Hassan. Um, thank you for uh, the kind uh, invite. I'm uh, a graduated student from uh, the Public Policy and Global Affairs uh, program. And today uh, we will be uh, presenting to you uh, one of the very interesting uh, policy papers related to uh, startup and human capital in Egypt. Okay. Uh, over to you, I lose. Okay, great. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so we will be discuss. Uh, we will be discussing today our first paper. Uh, it's titled "Startups and Human Capital Management in Egypt: 
in search of decent jobs. So our agenda for today, we will be discussing problem statement, uh, research question and methodology, our conceptual framework, uh, legal and constitutional context, startups in Egypt, uh, from uh, them entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurship support ecosystem in Egypt, and challenging uh, challenges facing startups in Egypt. Uh, then we will be discussing field findings regarding human capital related challenges, then our policy options, and finally our policy recommendation. So to give a little bit of a background, uh, the Egyptian economy is mostly based on services, uh, which contribute to 51% of the GDP, the gross development, uh, the GDP. So accordingly, um, uh, a, a lot of Egyptian entrepreneurs lies in uh, deter um, uh, found a key opportunity um, in deteriorating services, such as transportation or food sector. Uh, also in Egypt, entrepreneurship has contributed positively to economic growth. In uh, 2007, private sector contributed around 72% of total growth, and we found that small and medium enterprises have led nearly 80% of this growth. However, however, we found that there is um, an increase of discontinu discontinuation rate of startups or entrepreneurs in Egypt. So we have 2.7% in 2010, and the discontinu discontinuation rate increased to 10.2% in 2017, which is a serious cause of alarm. So to, um, to formulate our problem statement, we found that according to the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, the Egyptian report in uh, 2018, 55% of early stage startups said that they don't have any plan to add any employees over the next five years. So despite the importance of startups as a potential contributor to economic growth and their potential to create new jobs, they are incapable of providing decent job opportunities. So the objective of the research is to examine the current startup ecosystem in Egypt, focusing on human capital management through the lens of decent work um, framework and this framework is presented by the International Labour Organization. Our research question focuses on what is needed for startups in Egypt to thrive and more importantly what can be done to help them provide more decent jobs. Our research methodology was based on desk research uh, on Egypt entrepreneurship, on human resources management situation and also on successful international experiences. Uh, we also had a roundtable discussion with 25 participants and uh, key informant interviews with, with 15 participants. And our data analysis relied on qualitative analysis. And then I will give uh, the floor to Maria. Um, hello, everyone. So we, before we dig in deeper in the, in the research, I would like to discuss the decent jobs uh, framework or the framework that was guiding um, our research. Uh, I'm just waiting for the slide to load. Mm -hmm. You can start speaking very yes, sure. Yes. So uh, for the, the framework, it was uh, basically help uh, helping and guiding our uh, research and our research focus, uh, uh, formulating our questions and um, our ideas and how we're gonna approach the whole topic. So what do we mean by decent jobs? Um, decent jobs is a framework that was developed by the international labor organizations and um, it expands the focus um, of job creation from just the number of jobs created to actually focus on the quality of these jobs um, created, their impact on economic growth, how productive uh, they are. Uh, so for the job creation, um, it, it, it helps it has like have a comparative advantage to the market. So because a lot of people, when we talk about startups, they have their own suspicions and um, their own doubts. So this, uh, when we apply the decent work agenda, we're kind of uh, leveling up with the startups to be able to compete with uh, other jobs in the market. When we also talk about quality, we're talking about gender mainstreaming and um, gender mainstreaming and uh, jobs created, and we're talking about productivity, we're talking about free uh, choice, 
uh, in choosing your work, we're talking about social protection, social rights. Um, also, uh, we're talking about different approaches, integrated approaches uh, that could help maximize uh, the work of um, startups. So uh, we focused on four main pillars when we were discussing um, decent, the decent work agenda. Um, they were mainly the decent, um, the, the opportunities, the quality, uh, the employment opportunities, employment quality, access, and skills. By opportunities, we're talking numbers again. We're talking about uh, the numbers of jobs provided, the numbers of registered firms, uh, the numbers of newly added firms to the market. It's like scouting the market and knowing what's there and what's not. And when we're talking about quality, we talk about social security, we're talking about social dialogue within organizations, we're talking about equal pay, fair pay also. Um, and also we're talking about supporting of innovations and if there is room for development uh, within the startups and within the organization. Uh, when we talk about access, we're here talking about relevancy to the market. We're talking whether these jobs created are actually responding to market needs, whether they uh, fell within the supply and demand um, of the market and need of jobs. We're also talking about fulfilling uh, market gaps. And when we talk about skills, we're talking about the knowledge and competencies that these startups uh, use and offer as well, and skill sets of the employees in terms of basic, core, or technical um, skills, uh, and whether um, they there is uh, in the skills there is an appreciation of diversity of skills and uh, and how much this contributes in the overall um, economic growth of the employment opportunities provided. So we kind of dared to imagine what a functional uh, startup that applies a decent job framework would look like. And it looked um, a little bit utopian, but it, it has uh, an inclusive environment uh, of different backgrounds, different um, uh, capabilities. It also offers uh, fair and equal compensation to all uh, employees regardless of gender, race, or religion. Uh, also, it puts into consideration the well-being of employees and uh, it works on raising the morale of the all, all overall working environment. Um, also, it focuses on development tracks. Uh, it focuses on the development of uh, employees and it focuses on offering opportunities for growth. Also, um, uh, it has a participatory decision-making approach because this is key in actually keeping employees and reducing uh, employee turnover in comparison to top-down uh, decision-making processes. Um, now we're gonna give you uh, a background of um, how we defined entrepreneurship and context analysis of entrepreneurship in Egypt. Thank you. Thank you, Marie now uh, who's going to speak Feruz or Ibrahim? Uh, Ibrahim. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, following on uh, following on the previous when it comes to uh, defining entrepreneurship there are a lot of uh, different definition coming from uh, different international organization um, that recorded uh, the scene of entrepreneurship or supporting a startup uh, very early. So speaking at large, there are no specific uh, definition, but are the, there are some um, wide broad definition that are um, uh, commonly uh, used. Um, which yani, in majority they entail uh, starting a new business that is uh, scalable um, and it's um, generating uh, a profit. And at the same time, it has an uh, innovative edge and it's easy or it has the possibility to be uh, replicated. Um, moving forward. Can we move to the next slide? And when we, when we look at the Egyptian context of how Egypt defines startup, there is no legal definition in Egypt for a startup. Egypt defines companies in the space of uh, um, small companies or medium companies or larger company. And this depends on the, um, depends on the um, number of employees. It depends on the 
annual uh, sales or annual revenue of uh, those companies. Uh, currently, the governing law, uh, law of, uh, of corporates in Egypt is law number 72 that was published in uh, the year 2017. And um, uh, almost any for everyone to establish a new company in Egypt, it has to be uh, registered under one uh, under one of uh, of those. Uh, uh, but yet, there is no a specific or an, a law that has different benefits or different or an easier way for a startup to register in Egypt. So there is no definition from the eyes of the law in Egypt between a startup or an SME. Moving forward. Uh, Fairuz, you're moving the, the slides, right? Okay. And when we look at the, uh, the total uh, startup support system in, in Egypt, Egypt has a very vivid system of uh, supporting startup. Currently, startup from, uh, from talents or uh, fund. Go ahead, Dr. Laila. I thought you were cut off, but now you're back. Oh, please go ahead. Okay. So we are looking at one of the maps that records different players that supports uh, the Egyptian startups. Uh, there are different, yani, multiple players. This map was published back in 2018, today into, in uh, 2021 and going into 2022. Some of these organizations um, have been very active and have been doing an outstanding job as uh, some of the acceleration program as EUC, VLAB, uh, FALAC, Flat6 Labs are uh, now one of uh, the top famous uh, supporting uh, programs. Uh, other uh, funding opportunities or agencies uh, that have been active in the Egyptian market uh, over the past two or three years are not recorded here. But uh, we, ca we can uh, largely see a big space of uh, supporting system for a startup and it's segmented across uh, the different, uh, you know, different layers that uh, any new company that needs support. Next, please. Okay. When it comes to a generic definition for uh, new startups in Egypt, um, the first one is uh, locating and sustaining funds. There's a, a specific gap in funding between uh, the first funding or the seed fund and the gross fund. So there's a big gap in um, the acceleration fund or the second phase fund. So there are the current scene has a lot of fund offered at the seed stage or at the large gross stage. So those are companies that are ready to expand from Egypt to another country and companies that are nearly starting. But the intermediary space, it has a lack of uh, funding agency. Uh, the second startup is the legal and regulatory uh, uh, framework for different industry. It's not easy for any company starting in different industry to find the regulatory aspects uh, in their specific industry, not only in establishing uh, the company as uh, getting uh, the company papers, but if a company working either in uh, transportation, uh, logistic, financial technology, et cetera, uh, there are specific regulation related to each industry and those information are not easily accessible. Um, thirdly, is the uh, common culture that is being changed to have an acceptance for new strong talents to be working in a young startup uh, versus working in a large corporate. And finally, is the lack of uh, data or information. Thank you, Brian. Okay, so the next uh, part is about the human resources management problem identification. Uh, so we've identified five problems, uh, planning function, uh, acquisition function, talent development, and talent retention, and last, sanctions, contracting, and benefits. Um, so regarding the planning function, 
Um, we have an absence of an organizational structural plan with required roles and responsibility of, in the startup. Uh, in, in addition, there is an absence of um, assessing employee, employment needs and in terms of size and the specialization needed, uh, which can drive potential calibers away. Hence, uh, startups uh, tend to operate uh, mainly through learning by doing and trial and error rather than on formal education. Uh, the next is about acquisition function. Hiring talent is of primary concern for startups. Um, finding the right candidate with the right skills is a, challenges, uh, is a challenge for startups. And why? Uh, first, we have a shortage of talent uh, at both junior and senior management level of startups, uh, specifically in hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills uh, are defined uh, as skills that enable innovation, namely IT, design and marketing, and soft skills are negotiation communication skills. Also interviewees uh, mentioned flexibility and adaptability as key skills needed to succeed in a startup environment. Second, we have the brain drain, um, where the best talents leave Egypt in search of better job opportunities. Uh, furthermore, due to a shortage of financial resources in startups, um, they are unable to afford the best talents. Third, the education gap. So Egypt ranked very low with respect to academic training in entrepreneurship at the high school and university levels. Uh, many entrepreneurs face difficulty finding the right pool of graduates to join their startup due to a lack of integrated curriculum in many Egyptian universities. They depend more on fresh grads who have limited experiences. In addition to that, uh, the recruitment strategies of a lot of startups depend on only four universities in Egypt, which are Cairo, Ain Shams, GSC, and AUC. Um, and they may not, uh, and other private universities may not be considered as having the employability skills needed for most of the interviewees. And it's also noteworthy that all four universities mentioned are located in Cairo, which will bring us to the fourth problem, which is the local discrete, geographic discrepancy in the presentation. As uh, said by an accelerator manager, uh, there, is a pro uh, there is a problem with startups in governor rates as they copycat ideas in Cairo and try to implement, their, uh, and to implement them in their governor rates without tailoring them to their context. In addition to that, they can participate in competition, but they can't implement their ideas uh, due to lack of resources and support, uh, and support programs. So there is a problem of centralization where the best educational services, uh, education and services are located in Cairo. And the fifth problem is gender imbalance. We found that businesses led by women have a lower probability of continuation as compared with those led by men. Another issue highlighted is the difference in financial compensation between uh, males and females working in startups. And actually this was explained by one of the legal consultants that men are more willing to negotiate their salaries and benefits while women uh, are shy and cannot ask for that. Uh, some also female interviewees have highlighted issues of harassment and abuse uh, from some of the ecosystem here. Okay. This. We need to move on a little bit more quickly. Okay. <laughs> the researchers, uh, all right. Okay, uh, the third uh, function is talent retention. Um, talent retention is about providing decent jobs as most of them reported tough and stressful jobs with extended working hours, high risk, of, uh, high risk and high level of uncertainty, micromanagement, which can increase the turnover. Um, also uh, the absence of fair compensation system, uh, non-provision of medical or social insurance, an absence of salary grading scheme can deepen the, the, the feeling of insecurity and talent retention. For the fourth function, it's about development, fu development function. Um, most startups depend on young fresh graduates with limited experiences, so they require a lot of technical development training 
However, most startups uh, act on a very tight budget, so they can't afford to educate their employees. Rather, they can yeah, they allocate their extra budget to improving sales and investment. Um, we found that some governmental entities uh, provide some training progr uh, programs, but uh, the, one of the major problems of these trainings uh, is that they were Cairo focused, and uh, this um, this is um, I need to say that the paper was uh, written in the pre-COVID uh, <laughs> uh, situation, so the online setting wasn't uh, that uh, um, extended uh, like now. In addition, um, some of uh, the interviewees emphasized that um, the training provided by incubators, accelerators, is a repetitive training and some doesn't fit the context um, of the start. Okay. And I quote um, from uh, one, of the, one of the interviewees, uh, as far as I know, there is no program that support the area of human capital management. Even if, for example, an incubator accelerator gives a training, at the end of the day, it's only a training and not a capacity building program. So, uh, the fifth. All right, we still have more challenges to present. We are looking forward it's to the this. last one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the last one that some startups abstain from providing contracts to their employees as a cost reduction mechanism. Uh, some startups force their employees to sign their resignation with their employment contract to be able to terminate them without notice. Uh, in addition to that, registration process, tax taxation schemes, and subsidized insurance plan constitute a burden on startup resources as they don't have financial resources to provide medical or social insurance, nor time to handle the complexity of bureaucratic things. And we'll give the mic to Marianne. Right, we're now going to listen to the policy options. And yes, uh, uh, we move through them quickly, Marianne. We'll do, don't worry. So um, we have right. major five uh, policy options that we came, and that we came up with uh, based on the results of the research. The first one is focuses on the government role in supporting the, the startup ecosystem in Egypt. And um, the policy option is for the government to have uh, a, a comprehensive framework that aims at creating an enabling environment uh, for the ecosystem players and so they could be more uh, empowered to offer uh, decent jobs. Some of the initiatives and uh, accelerators um, that exist, uh, they offer funding opportunities, mentorship programs, uh, they build the capacity of uh, the startup uh, employees and they offer networking opportunities. Uh, but before any of these um, activities or initiatives uh, offer, there, need, there is a need for defining uh, and differentiating between different types of uh, organizations, whether uh, small and medium enterprises, startups or corporations, based on the size, the capital and types of services to be better able um, uh, to offer talented, uh, sorry, tailored uh, incentives and uh, support packages that fits uh, each category of uh, the organizations. Uh, the second one in the framework, uh, the second um, point is the, uh, digitalizing uh, the government services to be accessible uh, through online porters, uh, portals and um, also the one-stop shops to facilitate the process of registration uh, of startups. Uh, as Fairuz mentioned, many of uh, the opportunities are in Cairo and they're not available in uh, different governments. So decentralization is key in um, creating a wide um, spread, uh, in good environment for the startups even outside of Cairo. Uh, this, this could be through a localized uh, training hubs in, uh, in governments and through local business development centers and also the one-stop shops and um, mega local hubs and um, different government rates and cities. Uh, the second policy option uh, that uh, uh, we uh, decided on was focusing uh, mainly on the human capital management uh, component in startups. And this is through uh, building the capacity of uh, the startup employees on uh, what it means for human capital management and uh, how to better uh, provide a good working environment. Um, 
for uh, their employees. Um, this could be through the building the capacity, uh, raising awareness uh, through information sessions, and mainly about also labor uh, related uh, legal processes in terms of contracting benefits and how they can provide uh, fair and uh, safe environment for everyone. Also, uh, one of the most important uh, points here is um, initiating uh, a code of ethics for the startup ecosystem in Egypt that could help uh, guide uh, the development of startup scene in Egypt through uh, ensuring transparency, accountability, and addressing managerial problems uh, in the ecosystem as a whole. And this will be through setting uh, the operational frameworks, uh, highlighting the human capital management component um, in the ecosystem, or, and also fair contracting, uh, deciding on tangible and intangible benefits that could be offered um, to employees, and also ensuring female representation and positive and safe culture, and sharing best practices and uh, legal channels for employees that could use uh, they could use. Um, for the third policy option, uh, we're integrating and capitalizing on the existing uh, corporate social responsibility programs, uh, so we can have partnerships. Uh, Miriam, between... you, you need to move on. We only have five mi more. Minutes. Okay, so uh, we're gonna move on to the fourth that's policy the main option. Point. Okay. Okay. Um, briefly. Um... Policy option number four is um, making a strong linkage between higher education curriculums to meet startup market needs. This has uh, more focus on uh, the current curriculum development, establishing university training hub. This actually has been implemented across the two years through the TEEK program. There are now uh, specified entrepreneurship center in Aswan and in, uh, in Kona. This paper was written before this. And the last policy option was uh, to enhance the partnership between startup civil societies. One of the components in this uh, policy option to, um, to build funds or to redirect funds toward the important topic of uh, startup human development. Going back to you, Marian. Uh, Fairuz, what happened to the presentation? <laughs> OK, uh, can we have the slide, please? Right. So I will speak. So for the policy recommendation, the first one we go with is the government support framework, uh, as it's very vital in uh, supporting the startup ecosystem in Egypt. Um, also, uh, the training programs and uh, improving the curriculum is very essential, as one of the participants said that the economic systems are moving faster than the education systems and we need to level up uh, to match the economic uh, requirements and gaps in the economy to have better productivity and growth. Um, thank you all very much and we're looking forward to your questions and discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Mary Ham. You're done with your presentation and uh, you presented the policy options and I think during the discussion you can add on more details about uh, the recommended policy and how you see its uh, implementation going through. So without further ado, we're, uh, we were struck by COVID after uh, we completed this first part of our uh, research paper. And uh, no one expected that uh, COVID will impact everything under the sun. It also impacted human capital management in startups in Egypt, and that's why we uh, started writing up a second uh, part for our research dealing with the effect of COVID on human capital management in startups. And Dr. Shahjahan was the lead author for that uh, paper. So he'll take the lead in uh, the presentation and uh, coordinating the uh, PowerPoints by the next group of researchers. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Laila, and thank you, uh, our um, very talented researchers of uh, the first paper, Meriham, Fayouz, and Ibrahim. You have done an excellent job. Now we are moving to uh, the second paper. The title of the second paper is The, the Effect of COVID-19 on the Human Capital Management in Startups in Egypt. As Dr. Laila has indicated that the COVID-19 has impacted Everything, of course, startups are also uh, seriously affected 
because of its um, its impact and and um, this uh, group of three group of uh, this group of researchers Pyrus, uh, Mariam and Shuruk Fauda uh, they also have uh, done an excellent job and you will uh, listen their presentation so um, back to you uh, researchers and you have 20 minutes time please try to complete your uh, presentation within the given time frame so that we can listen uh, more insightful comments from our discussions um, so please go ahead with your presentation good luck Along with my colleagues, Fairuz and Shiru, uh, I will be presenting uh, the, present, the, ne the next presentation. And my name is Maria Walid, and we will be presenting uh, a paper on the effect of COVID-19 on hu human capital management in startups in Egypt. Uh, this policy paper is a continuation on uh, the previous policy paper, so we tried as much as possible to continue on uh, our colleagues' work. Um, why did we do that? Because COVID-19 had a huge impact on the GDP worldwide uh, with an expected fall of 7.8 uh, in 2020. Uh, startups and SMEs were highly affected due to their fragile and flexible net, uh, nature, so they, uh, they also were hit hard. Uh, countries made uh, different policy changes to combat the negative effects of COVID-19 on the labor, including labor-specific policies. This also included credit and deferral uh, policies. For Egypt, uh, there, there was a lot of changes uh, done, but not on the labor specific policies concerning the startups and SMEs. Uh, the Egyptian economy was also hit hard during COVID-19, yet, yet the IMF uh, considered Egypt one of the emerging economies that was able to maintain a certain level of growth. Uh, a study uh, was done and um, uh, the, the, the sectors were uh, by the code, uh, the code is a consulting company, and they said that there were some high, perfor high performing sectors and low performing sectors. We also took that in consideration, and my colleague uh, Fairuz will, will, will uh, discuss this uh, f further with us um, in the next uh, slides. Um, um, moving on to the legal side or the, the, the more uh, um, formal side of, 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 of things. In 2017, MISMEDA was developed. MISMEDA is the uh, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agencies. And it was developed replacing the Social Development Fund to provide more structured and institu institutionalized support to uh, entrepreneurship uh, as the top of the agenda of its mandates. Um, uh, the economic development programs under the Egyptian uh, Vision 2030 promotes an entrepreneurship highly, and it also um, highlights the importance of start startups for the Egyptian economy. Um, in 2020, law number 152 uh, regulating the medium and small and uh, micro and small and medium enterprises was issued. It includes entrepreneurial activities. Uh, the law reinforces the role of Ms. Mida as well in leading the development of entrepreneurial activities. So this is just to set the context on, on, on our paper and uh, what's coming next. All of this will be discussed in details in the next parts. So I will move uh, on to my uh, colleague Shuru uh, to uh, um, take us through the, pol uh, the problem statement and the objectives. Thank you. So putting everything together, this is our problem statement. COVID-19 has resulted in turbulence in the global economy, and it was also evident in the Egyptian economy. And this led to higher degrees of risk and uncertainty, and especially for startups, because they're known to be institutionally fragile. This led to constraints to the business model of startups. Even though Egypt is ranked among the 60 highest emerging startup ecosystem, it ranked low in labor resilience. So it received a ranking of 70 out of 100 countries. And this is uh, a bit of an alarming ranking during this pandemic because it was human in its essence. So it was important to make sure that the human capital is being managed properly. Bayrouz, can we move uh, to the next slide? So the main objective of our policy paper was to identify the needed development in the startup supporting ecosystem under the COVID-19 pandemic with a very special focus on human capital management, decent work and labor resilience inside startups to help the startups recover from the negative effects of COVID-19. 
And the core question was, how did COVID-19 pandemic affect the human capital management practices in the Egyptian startups? And what is needed for startups in Egypt to recover from the crisis and sustain decent jobs and labor resilience? Let us have a look at our methodology. In order to address this question, we employed a mixture of secondary data that is data collected uh, previously by other researchers in the form of articles, periodicals, reports, books, and majority of the articles that we used um, about specifically this topic of human resources management during COVID-19 dated from 2020 to 2021, since it's a very pertinent topic. And we used primary data, data collected firsthand by us. And this was done through key informant interviews and focus group discussions. In order for us to collect the primary data, we relied on purposeful sampling because we had specific criteria in selecting our participants. And we used the below categories, founders and co-founders of startups or employees working in startups or employees consultants that work in accelerators, incubators, NGOs, and or the supporting agencies in the ecosystem. However, we did not uh, rely on a specific years of experience for convenience reasons while selecting our sample. All the focus group discussions and key informant interviews were held virtually over Zoom due to the current situation, and the data was collected as follows. We held three focus group discussions that ranged between 60 to 90 minutes with representatives from the following categories. We had five employees in one of the FGDs, and we had six founders in another FGD for the founders and co-founders of startups. And the third one was five uh, supporting agencies. Then we held eight key informant interviews with key employees from the uh, startups uh, or the founders from the supporting uh, agencies as well to probe further on some of the challenges that we identified during the focus group discussions. And these uh, key informant interviews ranged from 45 minutes to one hour. And then um, let me uh, begin by highlighting the theoretical framework, uh, which I will later leave to my colleague, uh, Fairuz. So first thing, as we discussed, our focus here is human capital management. And human capital management is considered one of the most important drivers of growth because it discusses issues such as employee productivity and performance inside any organization, which is again, the asset of an organization or a startup. And for the sake of this research, we identified some of the very important HR functions, including human resources planning, recruitment and hiring, contracts and benefits, talent development, productivity and performance management, employee engagement, and workers' protection and well-being. And now I will leave you with my colleague, Fairuz, who's going to explain how this relates to labor market resilience and the concept of decent work. Hi, everyone. So as we all know, the pandemic caused the job crisis shock, threatening the livelihood of many citizens. So consequently, we began to talk about employees' resilience and the importance of having labor market resilience to reduce any negative impact on human capital management and stabilize the, li the livelihood of many citizens. Uh, so we summarized resilience by three key terms. Uh, the first one is about uh, absorptive capability. Um, it looks at attenuating the damage, uh, the damage on job creation by providing uh, employees uh, unemployment coverage, uh, basic physical and mental health services during the crisis. Second, the adaptive capability, which look at how to recover the situation by creating new jobs in alignment with the new situation. It includes flexible labor policy, hiring and firing legislation, lifting the burden of taxation, enhancing entrepreneurship ecosystem, um, and uh, through registering, uh, facilitating registration of new businesses that could support in helping uh, uh, alleviating uh, the, the impact of the shock. Uh, in addition, it has um, it includes financial access and developing a new set of skills of employees that is aligned with uh, the pandemic. Third, the transformative capability it encourages innovation through ICT infrastructure and also investment in our, uh, in technology and R and D. Um, our findings uh, remain um, uh, remain first uh, on uh, the ecosystem, the effects uh, of COVID nineteen from the ecosystem. So we have on the policy level, uh, despite that the new SME new law uh, 
uh, issued in 2020 um, that defined entrepreneurial activities. Uh, we still have uh, a challenge in differentiating between what is a startup and what is a, an SME. Uh, in terms of tax incentives, bureaucratic conditions and fees and funding access for such. And as said before, uh, financial access and tax exemptions on startup are, are at the core of adaptive capability during any shop that will allow entrepreneurs to focus on their operations and retain their human resources. Second, we're, uh, we're looking at governmental bids. Uh, the local businesses can form 40% of governmental bids. The chances, however, the chances in lending those bids are low according to startup founders. Um, and second, regarding the ecosystem, we're looking at the quality of support provided to startup during COVID-19. We found that the support coming from the Gulf region, for example, was much higher uh, to uh, the startups compared to the Egyptian ecosystems in terms of lack of funding and absence of a dialogue platforms with startup founders that could assess their needs. Second, we're looking at how um, converting business model, uh, converting the startup business model to online model uh, had an effect on their operations and on, the, on their human capital management. So first, we will be talking about operations. We have two types of startups, high performing startups and low performing startups. Uh, so for the high performing startups, they are startups that were dependent on digital platforms in the pre-COVID uh, phase. Uh, and they uh, utilize on the digitalization process during the pandemic to boost their growth, uh, such as the medical supplies uh, startups or food processing, uh, media or ICT. For the low performing startups, they were startups that were dependent on human interactions to provide their services, especially with uh, specific target groups like underprivileged or children. And uh, example of that, cultural or travel uh, so uh, for the low performing startups, they, uh, they um, converted their business model from scratch uh, to, be, uh, uh, to adapt to the online model, but they faced some challenges regarding the logistics in dissemination, their plan, digital illiteracy and weak digital infrastructure. Um, second, the shortage of cash um, encountered uh, during the pandemic uh, for all the startups. Um, and they um, they discussed the importance of seeking and diversifying new revenue schemes. Um, and then how the online model uh, affected the human capital management. Uh, we found seven problems and one cross-cutting problem. We will be discussing them uh, afterwards. So uh, first, uh, the human resources planning. Uh, we found that working from home overwhelmed some staff with tasks and unloaded others, which created an imbalance in the organizational structure with unclear rules and responsibilities. Second, hiring and recruitment. Um, uh, first, we have hiring boom versus freezing hiring. For the startups which expanded their business during COVID-19, they had a hiring boom where uh, they um, had a lot of uh, newly hired, but they did they didn't know their colleagues and they didn't know they didn't see each other before, which impacted the organizational culture. Also, they were having all their onboarding plans online, which were challenging for, specifically for IT sectors. While on the other side, for the low performing uh, startups, they refrained from hiring at the beginning of the crisis. Second, uh, the talent acquisition changed, the set of skills uh, changed because now it's all about Zoom. Founders were looking for employees who have excellent communication skills via online tools. People who are detail oriented uh, can follow up on messages and also have skills such as resilience and be results oriented. Um, third, contracts and benefits. We found that freelancing and outsourcing contracts replaced the full-time jobs because it's um, uh, it's not costly as a full-time job and uh, the online model uh, made it easier for this type of contract. Uh, second, uh, absence of social and health insurance. Uh, most of them didn't have any insurance, uh, which made them in a more vulnerable state, especially during COVID-19. And third, the job security during uh, the absence of cash, uh, because of the absence of cash during the pandemic, which um, uh, because of the decrease in sales volume or business income, which resulted in, uh, in reduction in salaries or dismissals. 
Uh, fourth one is talent development. Um, the shortage of cash affected the training needs from technical to mental health sessions. Also, according to the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, Egypt had low scores in research and development transfer. It also had low scores in entrepreneurial education and academic institutions. Uh, and the opinion of the startups employees varied regarding training provided by the other agencies. It was repetitive and there's some sort of distrust in the content provided. And lastly, uh, the, um, we found that the startups didn't have any crisis management training before COVID-19, which marked the gap in the readiness of startups toward any upcoming crisis. Um, fifth, the performance. Um, being available at home, especially during a lockdown, um, encouraged employees to spend their free time working. Uh, also, founders needed to ensure that operations were running. Hence, the methodology of assessing the productivity changed. Rather than assessing an employee by the number of hours, they needed to use another tool to, um, to measure performance uh, and deliverables of tasks. And the sixth one, the employee's engagement, um, the decrease in face-to-face -face communication uh, impacted the working culture. Um, also, uh, according to participating accelerators and incubators, uh, they found that uh, there was a high demand services, uh, the high demand on engagement activities. However, uh, it was really hard to offer engagement activities online and uh, they are very costly as opposed to startup budget. Um, and I quote, I must say engagement was crucial, especially as startups started uh, facing international competition and as a remote work surfaced and affected employees' attachment and loyalty to the workplace. Uh, seventh, employees' protection and well being. Uh, first, the crisis created a division between employees in the same organization, between those who can work from home versus those whose role do not allow it. Uh, so they were more at risk of COVID-19. Also, uh, working from home uh, improved gender equality criteria as women often balance their work with their caring responsibilities. And uh, it reduced commuting time and had uh, by having better work-life balance and more leisure time with their family. Uh, and we found that there is a rise of anxiety during the pandemic, especially with the health system. And finally, the cross-cutting topic, um, working from various geographical area, um, the online model uh, gave it a boost, which was a strength. However, uh, there was a challenge, uh, persistent challenge regarding team synergies and the cultural differences from geographical, uh, different geographical areas uh, uh, and as they do not see each other. Now I will give it the floor to Marie. Uh, so, um, before we discuss our policy alternatives, we found out that there are two main cross-cutting themes that regardless which policy option we choose uh, is very important and uh, crucial to the um, startups ecosystem. First is the access to funding and diversifications of fund. Uh, this has to be um, fostered and, and, and um, further uh, supported by the ecosystem. And the second thing is uh, the support provided to the governorates from the ecosystem. Uh, we found out uh, through our interviews and our um, uh, um, focus group discussions that um, the startups in uh, the governorates or the entrepreneurs in the governorate do not receive the same support as those who uh, are in Cairo or are in Alexandria or the bigger um, um, governorates. So uh, this is very important and crucial. This, this was very important and crucial for us to highlight. Next slide, please, if I rose. So uh, we have three policy alternatives or we had three policy alternatives and uh, they uh, are focusing on two, uh, two levels, the collective and individual, and I'm going to discuss this later. Uh, so the first one we found uh, it's very important for uh, startups to build up association and association or to develop an association such as the investors associations that are available in Egypt. We found out that this is in different countries such as India and, the, and, and in Europe, there are, there are various number of startup associations where they come together and discuss their um, uh, issues in, uh, collectively. Uh, th this representation of body, uh, this body of representation will be um, lobbying for their interests and the needs. 
uh, and we'll be discussing collectively their issues with the ecosystem, whether it's government organizations or incubators, accelerators, and investors, and so on and so forth. Uh, as a second step, we uh, said that there should be an expansion to this association to be available also in the government rates. Our second uh, policy or, uh, option or policy alternative is the digitalization of governmental services for startups. Uh, as Ms. Meda already has um, um, a platform for small and medium enterprises, uh, we also uh, found the importance of uh, another as part of this platform would be only for startups uh, to serve as a one-stop shop for all the startups, whether it's support or, uh, supporting the regulating their type of contracts, their type of work, uh, their uh, communication with investors and uh, um, trainings and so on and so forth. Um, many of uh, of um, of this. Um, this alternative comes out from the fact that we found out that many startups change their mode of work, uh, their mode of contracting from full time uh, from full time workers to part time uh, um, jobs or part time consultancies and project based uh, work as well. And this needs to be regulated highly uh, to make sure or to ensure that the, the employees rights are, are, um, are safe. Um, the third option is enhancing the support of the business incubators and accelerators to start up. Like everything else, uh, through our focus group discussions and our interviews, we found out that um, the incubators and accelerators also were struggling a little bit to accommodate to the new um, um, mode of work and and how they would provide support to the startups uh, so they changed their methods during COVID-19 and it's very important to keep on developing further and develop tailored programs for uh, incubators and accelerators as well in order to be able to provide better support so in, in, in other words capacitating the capacity developers uh, in in a way or another um, it's very important as well through incubators and accelerators to support digitalization, research and design, crisis and risk management, in addition to the HCM consultancies or the human capital consultancies that uh, must play an, an important role and a crucial role in the ecosystem. Next slide, please, if I rose. Your time is almost up. Can you please um, go quickly? Yes, this is the final uh, slide, okay. Dr. Shah Jahan. So uh, our recommendations um, were divided into collective and individual communication based on uh, what we have seen. So uh, our uh, our recommendation will be a combination of policy alternative one and two, which is the association and uh, the digital platform through Ms. Meda. Uh, the association will help uh, Startups communicate collectively or have a body a representation body that allows them to communicate with the the ecosystem. And on an individual level, we found we 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 recommend that the uh, we have the feeling actually that the platform will uh, provide startups with an, a better communication with investors and with the the governmental bodies. So um, by this we conclude our presentation. And uh, thank you for listening, and uh, we're looking forward for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mariam, Shuruk, and Faidus, for your very nice presentation. Now we are moving to a 50 minutes uh, time slot for, uh, 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 for our discussions, to discuss uh, all these two papers. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to invite... Sorry. Uh, sorry, Dr. Shahjahan. Uh, uh, we have the, the video, the, the media advocacy. The oh, sorry, uh, we have uh, the five minutes video, please. Yeah, go ahead. ما هو فعلا الكلام ده مش نافع كل شيء انا مش قادر استحمل خلاص انا مش قادر استحمل الصدفه لازم حل احنا بقالنا كتير قوي على الحد ده مفيش اي تنفيذ للوعود اللي بيتكلموا فيها مفيش تنفيذ للوعود ايه المشكله ممكن حد فيكم يلخص لي ايه اللي مضايقكم احنا كنا اتفقنا ان الدنيا هتبقى صعبه في الاول يا باشمهندس عادل واحنا بنتعين حضرتك قلت لنا اننا شركه ناشئه ومعلش استحملوا لحد ما الوضع يستقر ودلوقتي بقالنا سنتين ومفيش عقود ولا تامين صحي ولا تامين اجتماعي وغير كده كمان مفيش مواعيد عمل ثابته ومش بنعرف ناخد اجازات بسهوله 
احنا بنحاول نوفر تمويل يغطي توسعات شغلنا ومتعطلين بسبب الاجراءات والبيروقراطيه كمان موضوع كورونا اثر على مبيعاتنا بشكل كبير وفقدنا عملاء كتير كل ده بيخلينا مش قادرين نكون ملتزمين معاكم بس ان شاء الله هيكون في حل وانا هقعد دلوقتي مع استاذ وليد ونشوف حلول للمشاكل اللي عرضتوها هنعمل ايه يا وليد بصراحه الناس عندها حق واستحملت كتير ومش عارفين نديهم حقوقهم اللي وعدناهم بيها انا عارف والله احنا حتى ما عرفناش ننفذ خطه التدريب والتطوير اللي كنا اتفقنا عليها شفت القرار ده يا وليد انت عارف ده معناه ايه هو احنا ناقصين خساره يعني كده هنضطر نشتغل شيفتات من البيت احنا اصلا لما جربنا نشتغل عن بعد قبل كده كان عندنا مشكله في التواصل بين الموظفين وانتاجيتهم في الشغل قلت هو احنا ناقصين ده احنا يا دوب لسه بنقول يا هادي في تظبيط الحلول الرقميه اللي بنستخدمها علشان نطور من تواصلنا مع العملاء وطبعا كل انشطه التمويل والاستثمار اللي هنشارك فيها مع حضنه الاعمال هي كمان هتتعطل الانتاجيه بتقل ومش قادر التزم مع بعض كتير خالص في مظاهره شكل مش عارف اعمل معاهم لازم يكون في حل علشان ما نقفلش انا واصحاب الشركات الناشئه اللي زيي انا خلال ست شهور كورونا فريق العمل بتاعي نزل التلت والله يا استاذ عادل احنا عارفين ابعاد المشكله وعايشينها بس خلونا دلوقتي يا جماعه نستغل وجود المسؤولين معانا ونعرض عليهم مقترحاتنا والدعم اللي محتاجينه منهم عشان نعدي الازمه دي انا شايف ان قبل ما نتكلم في حلول على الارض محتاجين مساعده لتاسيس جمعيه للشركات الناشئه بحيث تكون ممثل لينا قدام الجهات الحكوميه والجهات الدعمه وتوصل احتياجاتنا وشكوانا ليهم بشكل مستمر مش عايزين الموضوع يقف على الحلقه النقاشيه دي وخلاص انا عايز اضيف على كلام استاذ عادل ان ضروري يكون في رقمنه للخدمات الحكوميه للشركات الناشئه وممكن نستفيد من منصه جهاز تنميه المشروعات الصغيره والمتوسطه ومتناهيه الصغر لانها هتكون همزه الوصل بين الحكومه والشركات ويكون عليها التشريعات المنظمه لاعمال الشركات وخدمات التسجيل والاعلان عن فرص التدريب للشركات والاعلان عن فرص التمويل المناسبه ونشر عمليات تقديم العطاءات للشركات الناشئه ومن ناحيتنا أنا برضو بقترح أنه يكون في دعم أكبر لحضانات الأعمال للشركات الناشئة نتيجة التغيرات السريعة اللي حصلت في القطاع بحيث يكونوا داعمين للشركات في حاجات كتير زي دعم بناء القدرات الرقمية للشركات إدارة رأس المال البشري ودعم مهارات العمل عن بعد إعداد خطط لإدارة الأزمات والمخاطر توفير الخدمات الاستشارية للشركات الناشئة دعم البحث والتطوير لحلول الابتكار والتحول التكنولوجي لسوق العمل الجديد عظيم جدا اقتراحات كلها جميلة ومبتكرة وأنا بصفتي مسؤول حكومي هوصل الاقتراحات للمسؤولين وأتمنى أننا في المستقبل نقدر نجمع بين الحلول دي كلها وندمجها وده هيخلي الشركات النشأة ليها كيان يعبر عنها وهيكون قادر على التواصل بشكل فعال مع أصحاب المصالح من خلال منصة جهاز تنمية المشروعات الصغيرة والمتوسطة ومتناهية الصغر وهيخلي الشركات النشأة قادرة على مواجهة التحديات والمنافسة في السوق المصري So we are now uh, moving to uh, our discussion part. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Amal Mawafi for her uh, uh, for the discussions on the two papers that uh, our researchers have just presented. So you have 12 minutes time, Amal. I'm sorry, say again? You have 12 minutes time. Thank you so much for the uh, opportunity to be with you today. It's a great pleasure to be with, uh, with everybody in terms of the audience as well as the presenters. And one thing we are sure of right now is that we don't have a shortage of human capital with respect to research at the American University in Cairo. So we are very happy with our budding uh, talents. Having been through the um, two papers and the policy briefs, I just had a couple of general comments before Before I delve into the more specific uh, comments. So uh, first, when we uh, start to speak about human capital in both papers, you start, the papers sort of start to operationalize the definitions much later at the end. And when we speak about human capital, one uh, the one thing that comes to one's mind is the Human Capital Index of the World Bank, which talks about three parameters, knowledge, skills, and health. So in those papers, we sort of focus on knowledge and skills. 
So maybe uh, if we could check uh, those subset of indicators well, that the World Bank gets out, like for example, Egypt ranks 104 out of 157 in 2020. So it would be pertinent to this discussion. Looking at both papers, there are a couple of points that might, you know, with all credit to the information provider, but there might be a couple of points that would give a couple of wrong impressions. So maybe we would need to just reformulate some of the way uh, the problem statements are put. For example, there is the notion like shifting the employment creation burden on startups, which should not be the case. You know, we lack in Egypt a concrete and a coherent uh, employment policy. And it's not the role of the startups to solve this problem. So it's not the role to create the decent and they contribute to the creation of decent work, but it's not like their ultimate role. So it's always, you know, employment has always been seen like a byproduct of fiscal, monetary, and sectoral policy. And in fact, Egypt did not ratify the ILO Convention on Employment Policy, which is 122. Moreover, also, Egypt is one of the few countries in the region in Africa that does not have a decent work country program, while several countries in the region are already working with the second and third generation of decent work country programs. The second point is on the reference to the malpractices vis-a-vis uh, -vis the labor law or uh, the decent work in startups. And this is not inherent to startups, you know, it's across all scales of businesses, but the way it's formulated as if it's inherent to startups. Uh, we have a lot of informal employment, informal establishments. And um, yeah, also, there was reference in the second paper uh, from one of the key informants on the lack of you know, provisions that uh, support uh, women and women's work, while in fact the Egyptian labor law uh, 12 for 2003, which is still under revision, prohibits these practices. So I think we just need to make sure that this doesn't look like inherent to uh, startups. Definitely the implications of COVID had their toll of every, on everybody and not startups specifically, but also the, the formulation as if that it, you know, it was like pertinent to startups only. I think this needs to be reviewed. Um, in both papers mention the word regulator and regulation. And I think this is a key question to this discussion. Who or which entity is the regulator for the startups? Is it GAFI? Is it Mismeda? Is it the Central Bank of Egypt? Is it the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development? You know, it's a bit of a gray area. We are not sure who's the regulator. And we need to make sure also, we know from good practice that the regulators are not implementers and they're not funders and they're not service providers. So we cannot have re regulators that are field uh, players. Um, the paper also, the, both papers move to uh, speak about, you know, non-standard forms of employment, whether it's in freelancing or outsourcing or short-term contracts and so on. And with the future of work being advanced to the, co the COVID-19, uh, lots of literature was put in place by the World Bank, by the ILO, the World Economic Forum, McKinsey, many entities have worked on uh, the future of work and on non-standard forms of employment, which would mean, mean that there are non-standard also forms of contracts and, and what have you. So I think this is something that needs to be looked at and more into onto that front. Moving more specifically on the first uh, uh, policy paper, and I was glad to uh, hear Peru say what I felt because I felt that this paper was indeed, you know, written before the COVID era, and somehow it needs to be COVIDized. It needs to be brought to the point where we are right now. And while the paper makes reference to the GEM report in 2018, but the second paper refers to the GEM report in 2021, so maybe we could start to use the data that is available for 2021. And the paper, the first paper highlights the GAFI and the investment uh, law of 2017, while we have the new SME law already in place in 2020. So I think the paper needs to be sort of brought a bit to the future. Moreover, the paper sort of mentions uh, the lack of information, and we, we, we are sure that Ms. Meda has the portal, and that's referred to in the second uh, paper. And in fact, in this time and day, we cannot refer to the fact of lack of information while we suffer from infodemia. There's a lot of information everywhere. So um, it's just a matter of coherence of the information. 
The policy brief is a very good reflection of the paper. However, there are some key points that are in the paper that are not reflected in the policy brief. Like in the policy brief, there is the discussion on the rural urban migration, while in the paper, there is strong reference to the brain drain. So I believe this needs to be brought forward in the policy brief as well. In the policy brief, there is reference to gender representation, while the paper looks at the broader aspect of inclusion, and this needs to be uh, brought further. Uh, the area on the gender aspect or the women representation, there is a sort of a blur, a blur a blurry area between employers and employees as women. I think this needs to be better uh, desegregated. Uh, looking at the talent development, I think, um, you know, there, there are non-formal ways that were already uh, pre-existent before COVID and during the discussion or during the presentation now, we, this has been discussed, the, the MOOCs or the, you know, the, virtu the many virtual online platforms that offer uh, courses, many of them for free and some that are not for free, of course. And there is also Arabic content that is being created uh, that could be used and the fees are not, you know, that exorbitantly high. Definitely, when we have people from uh, Ms. Meda today, and I know that Marwa is one of the discussants, Ms. Meda has a huge network of branches uh, across the country, with more all, all over the 27 governments, and they are, you know, very well able to provide a lot of uh, capacity building and training because they have been endowed by a number of the ILO toolkits, particularly the Start and Improve Your Business Toolkit, which operates in 100 and, um, countries, and Egypt was like the 101 country to operate that. So they have become the sort of the national custodians of this um, toolkit. So they're very well placed to provide uh, this, uh, this support. However, um, there are other points that I would also like to bring on this particular or, you know, policy uh, paper in terms of uh, the 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 recommendations or the policy options, and I'm moving to policy option uh, one, which uh, speaks a lot to the comprehensive government uh, startup support uh, framework. And I think, you know, the proper regulator in place, we can then speak about the different players. Uh, looking into the this, there was like the notion that we could start, that there could be a start of a jobs portal while we already have a number of private sector uh, job porters like Wazaf and Forasna. So how can we make better use of what is existing? You know, how can we build on what is there rather than create more uh, structures? And um, a lot of what we do needs, you know, we speak a lot about coordination, but nobody need, wants to be coordinated. And, you know, there lo lo lots of things are happening on the ground, but ju they just need to be brought better together so that we can profit from the synergies. And then there was uh, the notion on um, the establishment of training institutes and establishing more uh, training institutes in different governments. I would say that we already have, you know, public universities in each government and in each university, there is the sector that's called, you know, com environment and community development. And this is where a lot can be happening. We are aware that many entities are moving in the, in the space and support of startups, like for example, the Ministry of Youth and Sports that is a sort of chairing its youth centers as co-working spaces and providing some facilities in this regard. So just how to get all this together rather than create more uh, more of the same, more of the same. Um, reference has been made to the Rise Up Summit and, uh, and the, the work that Rise Up has been doing. And it's amazing, of course, but this is also another Cairo based initiative. And I think we need to focus on other initiatives that are not taking place in uh, Cairo that bring uh, different players from the ecosystem together. So we need or to sort of put some uh, support to make sure that those uh, summits take place in various uh, governorates. On the second, on the third uh, policy option, there is reference to CSR initiatives, and I'd like to talk about shared value rather than CSR, because for businesses, it's not charity, it's a business case. So how can they support the ecosystem with a win-win situation? 
So there, there needs to be linked, the startups needs to be linked with the businesses through uh, feasible or something that makes sense, whether it's the supply chain or it's their customer ba um, basis. It's not going to be because of goodwill only. So uh, there has to be a business case that is put in uh, place. Um, you know, some of the recommendations I find as too uh, utopic, like, you know, providing HR support from, uh, or from our basic income funders, you know, well, it's good that they happen, but on the ground, they're a bit uh, far-fetched in, uh, in my opinion. And uh, up upgrading the higher education curriculum to entrepreneurship and market needs, I'm sure you know people like Dr. Ashraf Sheta would be able to speak more about uh, this. But uh, if you know um, we have a lot to say there, and I might complement what Dr. Ashraf would be adding on that particular area because this is his piece. Uh, last but not least, I just wanted to, uh, to mention a point that Dr. Laila alluded to at, her, at the beginning of her, of her introduction, where she spoke about the importance of evidence generation. And this is very important to inform policy. And it's done on a very, very uh, sporadic basis. And sometimes, you know, we, we look, we all go back to the GEM report, which is more of a perspective or an opinion survey, rather than going down to all the players, the, the startups, and I might recommend that for the PACMAS to include in the establishment survey a sort of a module for startups so that we can have coherent data nationwide that comes from the people on the ground themselves. So that's on the first paper. If I may move to the second uh, paper very quickly, I think for the second paper, there was a key recommendation on starting a startups association. And uh, this is an excellent point. Uh, however, you know, um, a startup association might uh, be an NGO, as has been uh, said, but would it make sense to start it as part of a bigger parent organization, for example, the Federation of Egyptian Industries or the Egyptian Junior uh, Business Association, so that the linkages are fostered with the key sectors and the bigger uh, players? And when we, when we talk about a startup association, is this for the sort of the startup founders, the employers, or is it for the startup workers? Because normally when we, when we speak about the, you know, in terms of the ILO language, we talk about employers and workers. So it's not one and the same. You cannot, you know, put them all together in one uh, pot. Um, that was my key take on that. Also, the paper makes, the paper makes a lot of reference to the, uh, OECD, uh, the work on the global uh, labor uh, resilience indicator and uh, it, it differentiates between the structural and the um, the structural and the cyclical pillar, and there's reference in the paper to the rankings, and the rankings are given in absolute uh, terms rather than relative terms. So we don't know how in what is the order of magnitude of the increase or the decrease. So we might as well, you know, get some order of magnitude there and some relative uh, terms in that particular regard. And, you know, the, that was like, you know, the, the main points on uh, the second paper, there's reference also to the 40% of, of procurements that, uh, that could be generated from small and micro enterprises, and it's not necessarily startups. So this 40%, you know, it's not going to be coming into effect without the proper support for startups to be in that space, because when governments make their uh, bids, these are, uh, you know, bids that profit from economies of scale and startups are not there yet. So how can they do that? Maybe there needs to be a roadmap on how they can collectively work together or work with bigger entities so that they can make it up there. But on their own, I think it's not that feasible or that uh, viable in that particular uh, space. So I think I have completed most of my comments. And if there's anything else, I'll come back to give everybody a chance since we're running a bit out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amal, for your very insightful and elaborative comments. 
on both papers. We appreciate your time and attention on uh, these particular uh, cases. Uh, I am now moving to Dr. Shah for his comments, please. On mute. Thank you for letting me uh, participate, letting me to be a panelist within this uh, uh, very nice session and very uh, insightful one. I have several points regarding the two papers. First of all, I have a generic point. Number one, these papers are mainly uh, supporting the idea of creating a human capital management policy. So it is not a paper for entrepreneurship policy. So this is the first uh, thing to do. Number two is that the two papers, especially paper number one, I think there is a problem regarding the timeline. So my recommendation for them, these are generic comments. My recommendation for them is to revisit again because all of the references were coming from 2018. For example, as mentioned, uh, uh, the GEM report 2018. And I know that they have been trying to search GEM over Google, so they found only 2018. But eventually, if you ask the Venture Lab, they can, they can provide you with the version of 2021. And I can also refer to the entrepreneurship ecosystem, which you spend around half of the presentation uh, uh, about uh, introducing the ecosystem of entrepreneurship uh, at large. You referred to uh, Dr. Nabil Shalabi uh, infograph, and now we have the, um, the infograph for 2021. So you might refer back to 2021. Uh, and these will be minor issues to fix, by the way. In case you publish it later on, it will be much more fruitful. There is another question that I was asking myself during the two presentations. What if I erased the word which is called startups? Is it only the particularity of related to startups only or to different businesses in Egypt? Actually, while establishing my own business, which is right now has been there for two months. And by the way, I'm suffering from the same issues uh, as the people you, you were uh, 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 interviewing. Uh, uh, these are issues related to all the businesses in Egypt, not only startups, but also medium, small and micro and large enterprises, by the way. So there is a need to stress upon why this paper is different. What is the particularity of these two papers? How is it only related to startups, which was not clear from my revision for the two papers yesterday. You need to add a section within the two papers why these, pe these papers are addressing uh, the startup uh, ecosystem. Another issue uh, which, which cannot be solved for the time being, I think the sample size should have been a little bit larger or much larger if possible. Uh, this is another issue. Another issue related to the two papers, you mentioned, especially in the first one, you mentioned four options. And then at the final, you mentioned some sort of a recommendation to take option one and then sequentially to option two and then to option three or whatever. Personally, I think we should address the four options in a comprehensive manner. So I think you need to revise this type of recommendation. Another issue that might be related to, to COVID-19, uh, I believe that there must be some, some sort of more details about what happened according to the new normal. If you would like to add a section, which I truly recommend, you might refer to uh, jobs for the future and what are the skills that might be needed for the future. Something happened, we are now in industry 5.0, not 4.0. So what is needed? And I want to refer to something that happened yesterday with the permission of Dr. Layla and Dr. Shah Jahan. My, my son was choosing what he, was, what he is supposed to study during university. So he is in, in, in the school, in the high school. And I told him, we are getting more and more towards 
computer science. We are getting more and more towards uh, quantum computing, uh, artificial intelligence, and so on. Personally, personally, right now, I'm lacking uh, finding a suitable recruit, and this is a practical example, a suitable recruit in order to help me with even being a trainee or an intern. So there is a real problem related to startups, which need some sort of stressing upon. These are general, general comments. So let's go into the academic, more of an academic, uh, the academic issues. Now for the paper number one, we have citation, for example, you related to a citation related to Southern and Seven. Why? A problem. And then uh, 2017 for uh, GEM, which I truly understand, but you have to renew to 2020, okay? Uh, the research question uh, was a bit large, okay? So maybe you would have uh, preferred to put it into two, two questions. Uh, one, one thing that I would not like to hear within a presentation is the absence, the word the absence. Absence, uh, from my point of view as an academic, should not be there. You are assuming that there is an absence and you are talking about an evidence-based policy paper. Why did you assume that? What, what told you that there is an absence? And this is an absolute term. Please try to, uh, and then after a while, may not. Okay, may not. Okay, it's accepted to a, to a, an, in, to a great extent. This was written pre-COVID. Why policy options? Okay, agreed, no problem, but there must be some sort of a comprehensive uh, approach. The sequential approach, I think my own point of view uh, is that this can be worked in parallel, not sequential. If you are giving some sort of a recommendation to the policy makers, you should work in parallel, okay? Uh, adopt all options, okay? and so on. Regarding the curriculum, uh, I'm referring to uh, Amel, there is a lot that has been done during this period. And I will give you a personal example. I was responsible for designing the innovation curriculum and part of the entrepreneurship curriculum for the technical education schools. There is a lot of uh, public schools that are teaching entrepreneurship nowadays. Although, by the way, this might not be our topic, but this might be related to an indirect way to having some sort of an employable human capital. So if people, there is, there is a lot of researchers related to education or entrepreneurship education and the success of entrepreneurial uh, startups. So you might relate to this. You mentioned, um, maybe two or three examples related to Fikritak, Shirketak, I, I remember, and maybe the AUC, and then uh, AUC, GUC, and maybe something in Cairo, but there are other schools maybe outside of Cairo. They are doing a lot of programs, maybe not uh, in education. This was written 2018, not in the uh, core curriculum, but maybe at least extracurricular activities. So you might have to, you might try to relate to that. Let me go back to uh, the second paper. We have uh, uh, something related to labor resilience, which is really nice, okay? It was well presented, but let me ask you something. What were the sectors under investigation? Was it services? Was it manufacturing? Was it uh, related to digital uh, issues? Something that happened that you did not mention. What were the skills that were needed in order to do what we call other, what we call upskilling or reskilling of employees in order to cope with the COVID-19 under the umbrella of what we call the new normal after COVID-19. The idea of the new normal my point of view should have been mentioned. What is happening? This is a new normal. Uh, uh, another issue I mentioned before, uh, what, what, what is happening nowadays, nowadays worldwide? 
related to COVID-19. What about the ideas of human capital management in, uh, in a place like United Arab Emirates? You mentioned Tunisia maybe in the first paper or the second paper, I don't remember, but there is a lot of things that are happening related to global insights. Another issue is the digitalization of Mismida uh, uh, services. I will leave that to Marwa, okay? Uh, I think there, is, there might be some sort of a need for a one-stop shop, if, although this might not be the purpose of our presentation, there is a need for a one-stop one shop. You mentioned issues related to, uh, within the video, related to insurance, uh, related to uh, laws and regulations and procedures. By the way, you cannot, you, you cannot have a business for two years without insurance for employees. So you must revise this type of information there will be someone, an inspector, who will come and check the business, whether you are, all the employees are insured or not. According, we call it registration form number two, Stamarat name, by the way. Right. Uh, more details. I, I, I wanted to see more details within the policy paper. Although I know it is a policy paper. Uh, again, these are some sort of generic ideas for the policy makers. But at the end of the day, uh, maybe my personal style is tilting towards developing some sort of an action plan. People will read this. Again, the policymakers will read this, but they need some sort of a solid action plan. We are suggesting to do one, two, three, four, and five, not generic uh, ideas. At the end of the day, they might find this um, maybe at some sort of uh, 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 secondary data talking about Egypt. What can they do? If I'm saying one-stop shop, you're talking about Mismida, who are providing some sort of uh, 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 non-financial services regarding training and so on. You must mention what should the policymaker do? Well, this is what I believe in. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, I thank you. And I apologize for being that uh, rigor. And I'm more than willing to help. By the way, I wrote a paper related to uh, entrepreneurship, which tackles having some sort of a higher authority. I can share it with you later on. A higher authority that can take into consideration all the things that are related to entrepreneurship. Nowadays, we have an authority, which is called Mismida. Okay. So we have uh, the owner for this. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to have your uh, thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ashraf. I think we are happy that uh, you went through the papers uh, with very rigor. That is uh, one of our motto, as you know, public policy. We are actually looking for that kind of rigor in the policy issues. And uh, all of your uh, comments and suggestions will be taken into consideration. We also look forward to read your paper. Please do share with us. Uh, when it is convenient uh, uh, to you. So uh, I'm now moving to um, Marwa for your discussion, please. Uh, please limit yes. your discussion within 12 minutes. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, at first, I would like to uh, thank you for your efforts in both papers. Um, I'm going to start by um, a quick view on the ecosystem of uh, startups in Egypt. Um, I would like first to, to, to give us a little comment about uh, the question um, raised by ML about the regulator in SMEs. As far as uh, you know, Yanni, that uh, since the establishment of uh, issuing of the SMEs law 152 2020, uh, since then, uh, Ms. Made the mandate have been to so the only entity in the country to support and uh, develop the MSMEs in Egypt with, uh, with a vision of uh, uh, putting policies, recommending policies and strategies in cooperation with stakeholders, public and private stakeholders. Um, I'm not saying that we are putting the policy, but we should recommend it. 
Uh, one of the other things uh, that we have been raised uh, in the first paper is the definition of startups. Definition of startups, uh, thank you so much, Ibrahim, but actually uh, we have a new law that have a certain definition for startups in Egypt. You should work on it, yeah, and you should stick to it. We are talking about Egypt and go to the, the, the law that's um, um, talking about Egypt. Uh, the, well, uh, I will start by the business environment. I'm saying that um, Egyptian is the ecosystem considered one of the most uh, exciting and in demand uh, in the planet because a consideration of considering its variation elements, um, um, actions, including public private sector, incubation acceler accelerations, um, uh, institutions, uh, academics, uh, uh, all of this. Um, I hope I hope the first paper would cover this uh, large, huge ecosystem with its regulations, with its uh, entities, with its uh, private and public sector. I don't know why the paper kept saying that the public, the public, the public. Actually, policy won't work without public-private sector dialogue. Yeah, we should stick to this in the upcoming uh, uh, short time because it's time for the private sector to play a very important role in, in policy, especially for SME. Um, one of the other things is that you kept saying that the ecosystem is raising and um, supporting Dr. Ashraf Sheta, the, 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 the quoting that it's uh, lacking, so lacking, no, no, we are not lacking anything, it's just we need a functional ecosystem. There is a lot of laws, regulations, fee bankruptcy, fee innovation law, fee, uh, there is the financing law, there is a lot of laws related to start startups and supporting startups. But functioning laws, this is what we need. Also, I hope to see um, more details about the criteria of choosing, especially in the first paper, criteria of using uh, the, choosing the uh, sample. Um, is it certain government rates, uh, youth, ages, um, background, things like that? Uh, second, uh, the thing is that also that we should update the data referred to. And I hope they would mention uh, reports from 2019, 2020, instead of 2008, 2017. Um, I also think they should go back to the uh, Egyptian reform program, Vision 2030, uh, because they have a lot of pillars that would support um, the paper. I think they need more desk research to get more information about the real ecosystem. I hope actually really to see also something related to um, MSME's national strategy. Also, it, although it's not uh, published yet or approved, but still it's well known. Uh, Nile Cloners uh, initiative, there's a lot of initiative in the, in the ecosystem and I don't know, Yanni, they didn't mention them all. I hope that would uh, mention the references. Um, I didn't find a reference like OCD index, um, Arab Entrepreneurship Maturity Index, um, UFM integration report. There is a lot of reports talking about the authorship and human capital specific uh, issue in Egypt, but uh, unfortunately I didn't find any of them. One of the other things I would like to say that um, the whole world is totally changing according to COVID, as, we, as, as has been mentioned. The world is now talking about uh, remote working. And if people are going to work from home and what is the privilege of working home and the unprivileged of working from home? Are they going to pay taxes for working at home? Are they, having to, are they ha going to have social insurance from working from home? And they are raising different issues now 
at the market. Another new issue that we should, I think we should tackle all these problems um, is that there's something called, an uh, OCD uh, issued a report called uh, lost entrepreneurship. Lost entrepreneurship. Actually, there is a lot of entrepreneurship in the market that are not, they don't have the skills or the gut to go ahead and start their own business. We need to use this lost entrepreneurship power, especially that Egypt have a 70% for use in its population. We should get use of our uh, um, positive points in Egypt in the ecosystem instead of saying, uh, we need to establish an institution, we need to do so. I think you, need to know more about the ecosystem and the initiatives, endless initiatives in the ecosystem. Um, I think it's also the problem of cooperation instead of lacking. So yeah, it's a cooperation between different entities. Uh, I don't want to, ah, one of the main things I was surprised that you didn't mention is the SME policy. Uh, SME Law 152 2020, which regulates the whole market, or the whole ecosystem. It has uh, incentives, it's definition for uh, medium, small, and micro. It has definition for startups. It has definition, uh, it has incentives for uh, taxation and non taxation, um, supportive regulations for uh, stakeholders or related entities working with the MSMEs including incubators and accelerators, uh, companies, um, uh, land, land uh, opportunities, um, uh, public procurement, everything. There is a lot, lot of incentives in this law that should be taken in the paper. Also, I would like to know, Okay, I think also uh, when this is enough for the first paper and the second paper I would like, I would like uh, to uh, reemphasize that we, as I said before that the world is now working on from home so we need to adapt the paper to uh, for uh, new situations in, in the market and talk about what's recently happening. Um, also, we should take uh, certain surveys have been conducted in this area of COVID, one by the National Council for Women, Ms. Mida have conducted many uh, surveys in cooperation with ILO uh, and uh, UNDP. Um, also, uh, you'll find the UFM have conducted a lot of researches, surveys regarding COVID in the Middle East and North Africa. There's a lot of, of reports and surveys you can, um, Take, take data from them or yeah, you depend on them for the this. Um, I won't go, I will not go in details for policy recommendations because actually um, most of them already there. Yeah, you just need to refine the recommendations. And I'm uh, happy to share with you any uh, references, any reports, any anything. And I would like to say also, I, I almost forget that. Miss Mida platform is right now trying to help uh, uh, startups or the MSMEs. It's not ac actually for startups only, it's for small, micro, small, and medium to, um, to, uh, uh, to get license from online. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, you, there's an application online, you fulfill it, and then uh, you, take a you take a number or and a date to receive the license from the office. Um, and this is a new step. I didn't say that it's all, all its steps online, but at least we are starting to do digitalization in our uh, services. Another thing I would like to say that Egypt, when you, you've been talking about decentralization, Egypt, um, Ms. Mida have 33 offices and each office has its own one-stop shop. It, and some governorates, huge governorates, we have two OSS in it, one-stop shop. Uh, also, uh, according to the SME new law, 
Miss Mida and Gaffi are going to establish new uh, OSS uh, in, uh, in the governorates. So I believe that there is a lot of OSS entities in the, in the, in the, in the market that would support the small medium enterprise. Uh, I don't know, maybe you need to, to get more uh, information, uh, more reports, more um, going through uh, Egypt Vision 2030 and uh, the new reform program of Egypt also have a lot about the issue you are talking about. Um, thank you, I hope I didn't uh, take a lot of your time and I'm willing to share with you any information you need and um, thank you for your effort. Thank you, thank you Marwa for your, uh, again, very insightful comments and, and these are very useful for both papers. I think some of the things that uh, you have uh, mentioned, for example, whether uh, someone should pay taxes is working from home. These are uh, the impact of the new normal situation, which needs to be taken into consideration, both from the government as well as th those people who are uh, preparing the policy planning for the government and other organizations as well. I think this is equally important for government as well as startups or public and private organizations alike. Uh, thank you for your um, effort and for your time, please. Now, let me move to our last discussant, that is uh, uh, Abaya, please. You have 12 minutes time, ma'am. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure being a part um, of this uh, great webinar. Um, I'm very happy, honestly, uh, to finally discuss uh, uh, this topic uh, within the startups uh, ecosystem. Uh, I have been working with the consulting of uh, startups uh, for the past uh, few years. And uh, for me, uh, I'm very proud, and very happy that we'll be uh, discussing the uh, human uh, capital uh, issue within Egyptian startups. Uh, um, for me, for uh, the two papers, uh, I'll just conclude the, my points. Um, I think um, that I was expecting in the paper to uh, mention um, uh, the kind of awareness and the capacity building that it has to be uh, built to in the employers or the entrepreneurs. Um, as many entrepreneurs and employers, uh, they don't have um, uh, the awareness or the knowledge of, uh, for example, labor law, uh, the social insurance uh, regulations, um, and uh, uh, the contract income taxes and so on um, and I think this is a part of um, the initiatives um, that it should be um, uh, addressed to entrepreneurs and startup uh, ecosystem um, it's also um, I think we address the incubators formulation which I, I totally agree that it needs to um, work on uh, that it does not include only uh, the funding and the investment um, education and how to expand and so on it should include the operational it should include uh, the hr uh, management uh, because uh, those people uh, they hire they get fund and they hire a huge number of, of people with a uh, lack of knowledge and uh, the things i have previously previously mentioned like labor law contracts uh, social insurance and stuff like this which it impacts their um decent their startups or their uh companies to have uh, decent uh, work regulations uh so i think the incubators and the, the incubators and accelerators programs or or generally the supporting programs to uh, the startups it has to uh, be reformulated to to address all the aspects that a startup uh, founder or an entrepreneur uh, has to have the knowledge and skills to be able to run uh, such a company. Uh, I would also, from the regulation or the governmental side, uh, I would be looking forward for a, a recommendation like and we need to uh, legislation of the labor law. Uh, we need to uh, mention um, uh, more uh, uh, more things and to have a more comprehensive uh, and updated uh, law uh, due to the nowadays uh, regulations, especially the remote people that I don't think the Egyptian law uh, has anything to, um, to mention 
and, and to regulate uh, this relationship. Uh, so I, I would also um, add this recommendation to um, the paper. Also, uh, for the talent acquisition part, um, I, it didn't mention the uh, channels that it needs for employers and their, um, the access to uh, talent pool in the Egyptian market in order to hire people, because uh, I don't think that the only um, challenge for if you're talking specifically on startups is the funding, because we have um, a lot to access to funding nowadays. We have seen people that are raising uh, millions of, uh, of dollars and they are highly um, hiring people and hiring talent uh, and they cannot get a proper channels or an access to um, the pool of a market and also the employees uh, they're a little bit afraid to work for a startup because of decent work uh, uh, regulations that they might not apply or they have a previous uh, uh, they have a previous uh, experience in another uh, startup or something uh, the managing uh, remote work uh, also managing remote work people I'm so happy it is uh, was mentioned uh, yet I think that it needs to be um, addressed in a more um, in a more way because uh, it's it's the new norm as as we can see uh, so what about their uh, contracts were about their hiring um, uh, situation uh, how will we would be uh, be able to manage their uh, performance to manage their tasks at the paper mentioned there is some challenges uh, so i think from the recommendation we should mention how we would be uh, dealing with uh, this uh, are we going to do a certain uh, regulation uh, updating laws uh, or do a certain uh, capacity building or uh, awareness training for the entrepreneurs and the managers inside this startup to be able to manage people uh, remotely or on um, um, on in this new uh, norm. Uh, also, um, um, I would um, happy Yani. I would I would have expected that the paper just not on uh, not mentioned only startups, and uh, I would have um, uh, would happy to see in the future that if the paper would mention the SMEs, uh, because the startups uh, are so different uh, on SMEs. I think on SMEs they would have um, a challenge in the human uh, capital, um, especially in the access to funding. I think that startups may be lucky. Or the technology-based things are more lucky, but um, if you're going to mention to the growth, as mentioned in the first paper, that the growth of the um, uh, SMEs in uh, Egypt and their contribution to the growth is almost 70%. So I think that is we need to address the SMEs, their access to funding that is a bit uh, challenging because they're not technology-based uh, or technology-enabled. And they represent a huge sector of uh, the um, of the uh, private um, private sector in Egypt. Um, and this following to um, and this following to uh, their Aslan ability to manage very remote people, their digitalization because they're not technology based. They need to work on more on their digitalization and uh, how to be uh, ready, um, uh, their readiness for uh, digitalization also and the other uh, human capital uh, factors uh, that needs to uh, be uh, considered. Um, I think um, I think this is uh, uh, mainly uh, things uh, for also the regulations. I think that um, we need to uh, uh, address uh, not also not only the labor law uh, uh, laws, but I think the rules and regulations for the social in social insurance and um, income tax, particularly the social insurance. I need to be. I think it needs to. Um, to be uh, more addressed um, in this uh, recommendations uh, because um, in this HS, uh, HCM in startups that uh, rules and regulations are not uh, applied. Um, I think and this is all for for my comments and definitely I would I'd like to thank everyone for the for the, this paper. Thank you, Eva. Thank you again for your uh, kind comments and uh, your time that uh, four of you kindly spent on reading the papers and offering uh, useful suggestions and comments. I think I see Dr. Laila wrote some uh, comments uh, in the chat box. So many of the suggestions that you have offered today uh, relating to these two papers, I think there'll be some other uh, studies uh, in the future 
many of them would be implemented because some of the information that you provided is so recent. And I think this is this would be very useful uh, to be implemented in our next efforts. And this time, actually, uh, human capital uh, issues are the core uh, focus for uh, these two papers. And of course, the first paper was written before uh, COVID, uh, uh, before COVID, COVIDization. I think uh, Amal said today, this is this COVIDization situation. Um, uh, no one expected this kind of things may happen. And of course, uh, second one actually uh, tackled the COVID-19 situation. Uh, we very much appreciate your uh, support and your time uh, with us. Now we are moving to um, comments from the participants and Q&A. So Mohammed and uh, Walid, uh, is there any questions uh, to our uh, researchers? Uh, uh, Dr. Yes, no, Ms. Marwa, okay. yes, we, you have. I'm sorry. Uh, we just had from the participants only one question. Uh, um, the question is how other countries define startups, and this is the only one. So I'm also encouraging other uh, participants if they have uh, questions for their researchers and the discussions to write it in the chat uh, space. I see Marwa raised her uh, hand. Can you please uh, go ahead, please? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, um, uh, talking about the uh, definition of startups, I, I, I mentioned before, um, every country has its own definition or actually different entities are defining, but we, we must uh, work with the new SME law, which defines startups in a different way um, in Egypt. Uh, I just want to add that the, one of the main things that we can say lake really in the econ ecosystem is the R&D and the database. We don't have really R&D or database that would support uh, SMEs to grow to, from small to medium to... Uh, um, uh, also, we don't have the data that would support our uh, policy assessment. I don't, I don't, I need to assess the, the recent regulations about uh, SMEs, but there is no data to do so. So I think one of the main things that should be mentioned that R&D, M&E, and the uh, lake of m and &E, R&D, and uh, database. Thank you. Thank you, Marwa. Uh, I might have a recommendation for a series of papers, okay? Within uh, the two papers, I will take from the second one related to COVID. Maybe we are going too generic. Maybe another paper can be dedicated to managing mm. human capital within technology industry or tech related startups. Managing human capital within manufacturing uh, services or manufacturing facilities. Managing human capital within services industry. So this might be a very good, uh, a very good uh, beginning for a series of papers, but we go segment or uh, industry by industry. In fact, the easiest win to have or the uh, ripening fruit is to have something related to technology oriented uh, issues or technology oriented startups. And to be honest, I don't know uh, what is the nature uh, or the backgrounds of the researchers. I guess there is there might be a need for involving someone with a legal background so that he, there might be some sort of legal recommendations <laughs> so that the policymaker can take it later on to the legislative authorities and say, for example, as mentioned by Heber, okay, we need certain regulations about working from home because you cannot apply all of what was mentioned. For example, if I have a textile factory, I would not be able to tell the labor to work from home or a ready-made garments factory, but I can do that for a consulting agency like mine, okay? I can do that for any other types related to 
technology, maybe. So this might be a, a good recommendation for them if, if they accept. Thank you, Dr. Ashraf. I think this is a very useful suggestion and uh, we will take into consideration in the future if we include uh, a researcher with the legal background. The current researcher, I think most of their backgrounds is either public policy and public administration and, uh, and also the culture and sustainability. So maybe this is, uh, this is something that uh, HAP will consider in the future. Uh, is there any further question to our panelists and also the researchers? I think uh, Mariam wa wants to respond, uh, Dr. Sanjay. Yeah? Oh, yeah, Mariam, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shajan, and thank you everyone for the constructive comments. Uh, there are certain points that we just need to clarify um, and respond on to your, uh, to your, to your kind comments. Uh, firstly, we, we just needed to focus on the human capital management, and that's why not a lot of policies on entrepreneurial focusing uh, policies were, were included as well. Um, we tried to add uh, um, the legal aspect as well, Dr. Ashraf, from the standpoint of the new uh, MSME's law. And Dr. Amal, I cannot agree more that there are still confusion within the ecosystem itself on the legal uh, aspects of it and who is the regulator. Even with the new law, uh, is it Gafi? Is it... Um, is that Ms. Mida and we actually, as researchers, we stood some time um, after the first paper was 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 uh, published, and we discussed it among ourselves which uh, agency should be focusing more on uh, uh, startups, or we should include in our research, especially that the first one focuses more on Gafi, as you can see, and the second one is focusing on Ms. Mida. But the differences between the two is the second one actually was uh, written after the the law itself was. Uh, was uh, was issued, so that's why uh, we found that it's it's better to put Ms. Meda on uh, on the top of uh, the, the the agencies leading uh, as per the, the law. Um, for the for the for the methodology itself, uh, we try to include as much uh, sectors as possible, depending on the sectors that we have also uh, discussed, the high performing and the low performing sectors. And that's why uh, you will find tech uh, startups, you will find fashion startups, you will find consultancies. Uh, there are a lot of, of, of startups that were included or a lot of sectors that were included. And we also included them in the methodology in our second paper as well. Um, in, in, in the second paper, at least, the lack of information uh, was, was, was mentioned in a sense of quantitative data. We did not find the number of startups in Egypt in general um, um, over the course of the years, although we searched a lot, whether on the OSD level, on the World Bank level, from the ILO, even on, on a local uh, level. Our research uh, did not uh, come out with conclusive date of, uh, sorry, inclusive um, number of the startups available and uh, their division by sector. And I think um, this is very, very important to have in the future for future researchers or, or in general, uh, to have uh, further data on, on, on uh, startups and entrepreneurial activities in Egypt. Um, in reference to uh, the, our recommendation to uh, the, the business association and why we did not uh, attribute it or, or um, um, lobby that it would be with another uh, investors association and so on and so forth because we really wanted the startups to be independent due, due to their uh, nature and uh, that's why we want them to be as independent independent as possible uh, when they um, uh, collectively communicate with with the ecosystem uh, with uh, Dr. Amel's comment on the 40% procurement and uh, percentage of local companies, we discussed it with them, and I think also in the paper we mentioned that they could form consortiums that would enable them in the, to, to, uh, to, to be together and work together on um, um, the, joining this 40%. Um, the jobs for the future, and this is a topic dear to my heart, uh, and the skills for the future. Um, I personally um, I'm, I'm very interested in this topic, but we did not find a place for it in this paper specifically because we're focusing on uh, capital management, as, as I mentioned uh, before. Um, there are both services and manufacturing uh, um, companies in. Um, involved in, we're involved in, in the sample. And uh, we could also see the differences between how each and every one of them has 
has worked uh, for uh, the future of work as well and the online move from uh, being uh, let's say uh, the new from the new norm maybe it was not shown in the presentation but it's in the core of our conceptual framework um it led us to the effects on operation and human capital management and uh, we have discussed that the skills needed through this time at least during COVID for the startups is resilience and flexibility and adaptability more than the technical and uh, um, uh, the soft skills and this was um, as uh, lobby as also uh, delivered by uh, our informants and our uh, key uh, our focus group discussions so this is in a nutshell I just wanted to clarify these issues because I think they're very important and uh, in, in a core part of our paper I would like again to thank you all for your constructive comments and uh, and I think we will take it in consideration in our future research, inshallah. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you so much for your responses to the queries and questions of our distinguished panelists. Um, is there any further question? Uh, there is a question, yes, from one of the participants, Mona. Yes. Yeah, what, what is the question, uh, Walid? Is it on chat or we cannot see it? No, Miss Mona is allowed to talk. Yeah, if you can uh, talk, uh, she, she yeah, raised yeah, her she, hand. Yeah. yeah, she raised her hand. Please go ahead. Mona Fani, please uh, ask your question. Miss Mona. Okay. <laughs> you are muted. Uh, if not. Maybe I'd like to raise a question to the yes, panelists. Yes. Um, I think, I think I it back. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. uh, I hope uh, to uh, to ask about the goal of the public policy hub is to introduce the recommendation for the uh, design makers or uh, or what about this is the first question. The, center, the second question is about uh, uh, is what about the the law that released in uh, uh, 1918 uh, about the intensive of the uh, science technology and uh, uh, for uh, uh, university and the research institute to establish uh, companies. Uh, what about uh, this and the uh, it can be enhance the uh, policy uh, that you introduced. And thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Laila, for the first question. Right. Thank you, uh, uh, Mrs. Mona, for the uh, question about the public policy hub and its goals. Yes, we aim at raising awareness about specific policy issues that are uh, suggested to us by government. Some of the issues that we work on. It's, uh, it's really an achievement when we organize these discussions and get people uh, more to be more aware of the existence of the problem. Uh, this includes what we are discussing today in terms of startups and the difficulties they face in managing human resources, whether pre-COVID or post-COVID, it was always a challenge and continues to be a challenge and people are not yet sure about what the new normal is going to be like, not us here in Egypt, but everywhere around the globe. So creating this kind of awareness and opening the space for these discussions is one of our main goals. Additionally, once we are done with our research, we try to be timely in, its, uh, in publishing this research and disseminating it in various forms so that it reaches the policymakers and they can make use of it in dealing with the problem. We're not uh, really claiming that we are uh, uh, for sure uh, following up on whether they take our recommendations seriously and whether they implement it or not. We stop at the point when we just present them with the research, explain it and uh, uh, provide it in various formats that can be easily digested by the policymakers. So the lengthy version, the short version, and even the, uh, the video of two or three minutes to make sure that the message gets across. If they are keen on additional research, we're there with our doors open, uh, uh, willing to do further, uh, more specialized action-oriented research if needed. And if not, we move on and take on additional problems from government and uh, from policymakers and try to do our best in uh, collecting the data from the field 
in addition to the desk uh, research and presenting it in these various uh, forms to make sure that the message gets across. And uh, it's the same thing is happening here. Very few people outside of our uh, maybe academic and professional networks know about startups and what they're doing and the challenges they're facing. And even those who are immersed in the field are still wondering about the new normal. Covidization or <laughs> COVID-19 has struck us in many different ways. And, uh, and we're no longer sure about what is the new normal or it's going to be a normal thing or we're going to get over COVID one of these days and go back to our original ways of uh, performing work or it's going to be a blended format. We're, we're not sure. It's still a big question mark. So discussing this question mark is in itself an achievement. And by the way, I tested COVID twice. So, yeah, it's always uh, amazing right? how it's affecting us. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Laila. I do not know who will respond to the second question relating to law. Uh, Dr. Ashraf or Amal, one of you probably can respond to that, or both of you, please. You are muted. Uh, there, is, there is some sort of a law, but uh, honestly speaking, I do not know about the details. But again, I'm trying to refocus about the topic of these two policy papers, which is related to uh, human capital management. The idea of discussing law with all due respect, Mona, the idea of discussing the uh, incentives or the entrepreneurship ecosystem can be a part or the scope of another policy paper, which I'm sure that the uh, public policy hub have discussed before. So maybe we can discuss it later face-to-face. Uh, 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 -face. Thank you. Doctor. On the issue of the law, let me say that we, we have a golden opportunity right now because the labor law is under revision and the labor law never addressed that particular area. So I think it would make a lot of sense to have some recommendations in this uh, direction and also while the social protection law has been sort of revised but there could always be amendments or executive regulations that could be put in um, this space as well so i think the labor law provides an excellent opportunity and i think one key institution that might be a good sort of bridge between the economic and the social policy is having an economic and social council like many other countries in the world where you make sure that the social aspects talk to the economic aspects and they are in tandem. Thank you, Dr. Amal Amarwa. Yes, I just want to add that I, I thank uh, Dr. Laila and the whole team and uh, the Policy Hub for, for uh, discussing or tackling these issues because it's the first time for um, for partners or stakeholders to talk frankly like that and um, uh, uh, putting putting points for the problems and what's missing, what's uh, needed, what's um, and everything else. So thank you so much and thank you, Mariam and the whole team for your effort. Whenever we are saying you need this report or this data, it's not because you uh, neglected this area, but actually we are trying to make the paper more uh, effective and rich information. Thank you all for your efforts, really. Thank you. And I'm, I'm very happy to share with you, I will be sharing with you an infogram of the uh, law uh, prepared by Decode. It is very nice and simple that would uh, give you more information about the law and its incentives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marwa. If there is um, no questions from the participants, I think uh, let me go back to Dr. Laila for the final comments and closing. Uh, meanwhile, thank you all for your uh, uh, participation and for the panelists. I think we are very grateful to you for our very hardworking researchers. Thank you all for preparing two very nice reports. Back to you, Dr. Laila. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shahjahan, for moderating the session. I just like to uh, reiterate uh, that uh, we finished the first uh, policy research paper before COVID and uh, it was due for presentation right after 
in uh, it was uh, finalized in 2019 and then all those sort of changes took place new laws were uh, suggested new uh, regulations uh, put to the fore new studies new rankings and uh, it was not updated. It was always uh, on our uh, to-do list to uh, go ahead and present it and organize the seminar face-to-face, -face, but this never happened. And the uh, decision was made to come up with a, a sequel to the study focusing on the impact of COVID-19 on human capital management in startups. And this was the core of the next uh, policy paper. So it complemented the first one. But yet many of the suggestions you came up with are definitely very constructive and useful and maybe the uh, uh, core uh, for new papers and new policy research papers related to the issue, specifically those that may be uh, focused on uh, sectors uh, uh, in specific rather than uh, talking about startups in uh, general. And then we will have time to check the latest uh, strategies and papers and maybe expand the sample of interviewees uh, who are uh, facing those challenges uh, in managing the human capital within their uh, startups. We had the good fortune to get feedback from different uh, authorities. So we assume that uh, Mrs. Amel Mouefi represents still the point of view and the experience of the International Labour Organization where she spent many years working there as a director. So we capitalized on her background with the international labor organizations, Dr. Ashraf Shita representing academia and private sector and consultancy uh, services. Uh, Mrs. Marwa Abdel, -Wahab repre uh, Abdel Taweb representing government and uh, Ms. Meda and all the good work that they are coming up with. And Mrs. Uh, Heba Ayed uh, representing the uh, private sector and uh, developing talent within uh, the startup uh, business. I think uh, all the suggestions that were made will be taken into consideration in the new research papers that we will be trying to present. And uh, it was really an enjoyable and very informative discussion when we got feedback from these different entities. The session is uh, recorded, so it will be available to everyone to hear out uh, those constructive suggestions for future studies. And we may take you upon uh, your words and uh, invite you again to uh, discuss additional uh, papers. I'd like to thank definitely the researchers, uh, the research teams, the young researchers who have done such a great effort organizing focus groups and uh, individual interviews pre-COVID and post-COVID and going to the different startups and meeting with the initiators and the uh, founders to understand more about the challenges and what needs to be done. But it still remains a big question mark for startups and for everyone else in, uh, in all different types of organizations as the discussants pointed out. It's, uh, it's still uh, a big question about the new normal and what's going to happen and how are we going to uh, deal with the challenges faced. So we uh, hear the news, uh, Omicron, the new variant, every day there is something that is totally unexpected. They expected that uh, they're going to celebrate Christmas and the holiday season, but now in most European and uh, Western countries, they're canceling the uh, celebrations and uh, realizing that maybe the vaccines are not that effective as much as they believed. So all those issues uh, worldwide, they are affecting everyone and affecting startups, so why not? Mm -hmm. And how they manage the human capital management uh, over there. So thank you again to the researchers, the discussants, thank you to Dr. Shahjahan, and thanks due to Oxfam Youth and Employment uh, Program for initiating the uh, discussion of this uh, timely and hot topic. And hopefully we will be able to organize more sessions and more research uh, related to startups in Egypt and maybe expand it to include, as uh, Mrs. Marwa suggested, uh, micro, small and medium enterprises as well and the challenges that they also uh, face. So uh, if there are, no additional uh, comments. I just want to uh, alert you to the fact that the uh, copies of the studies will be available in uh, soft uh, version on uh, the AUC website very soon, and they'll be sent to all the participants. 
and hard copies will be made available as well so that you can place them in your offices and uh, look through them again and suggest what needs to be <laughs> added and what needs to be uh, suggested for future research. Plus the video as well. We'll try to disseminate it, get people to know that the startups do exist, but they're facing challenges and we need to take more care about how to develop them and get them to uh, deal with these challenges in a more uh, effective manner. Thank you again. And, uh, uh, we uh, announced the closure of our webinar. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I think, Dr. Laila, we need to thank Walid, uh, Mohamed Khadzi, and um, right, the public policy hub uh, team working behind Khadiz. the scenes. Yeah. They've uh, gone through a lot of uh, effort to prepare all what's needed for this seminar. Uh, top of them, uh, Mohamed Adri, our uh, talented program manager for the Public Policy Hub, who's now in Canada, but still working remotely. Now it's definitely a new normal, <laughs> and he can manage everything remotely from across the uh, Atlantic. And uh, Walid Adib, who right, was uh, just a very, very committed uh, uh, senior <laughs> specialist, and he's on board with all the researchers, all the discussions, all the paperwork at AUC, which is uh, quite a bureaucracy, and put that on record. <laughs> Amal is, <laughs> is understanding uh, the uh, bureaucratic issues we face at AUC, and our also talented Radir uh, Ibrahim, our media expert, who works with the uh, professional companies to develop the videos and to disseminate them and to manage the social media platform of the public policy uh, hub so that we get our work out there for people to read and, uh, and watch the videos. If they do not want to spend too much uh, on reading, they can still watch the two, three mi minute video. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank we'll you. See you in future events. Inshallah. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.